we're going to give this a shot. Uh, I plan on posting this over lunch. So we'll uh, record it, uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll have to compress it, and then download the video for it. And then I'll uh, also post it as a PDF, as well as just the notebook file itself. But, so we'll also have a WMV on it so you can actually listen to it, et cetera. Uh, I have uh, problem number one from the homework. And it says I have a 35 kilogram block, which is just uh, resting on, um, on the ground. So I guess we could uh, throw some ground in here. Behold ground. And uh, you know, if I'm not going to push or pull on it, it's just going to kind of hang out, no acceleration. But uh, I am uh, I'm pulling on it. So I grab a rope or something like that, and I tie it to the box. And because the box is uh, short compared to me, when I'm pulling, I'm actually pulling up at an angle. I guess I could get down on my knees and crawl and pull it straight sideways, but you know, getting old, so my knees don't want to do that. When I'm pulling with my 185 newtons on the rope, part of what I'm doing is actually lifting the box off the ground. Of course, I'm not pulling hard enough to actually make it come off the ground, but I'm lightening it. If, uh, if I wasn't pulling at all, the bathroom scale, that's to say the normal force, underneath the 35 kilogram box would be just simply mg, uh, 35 times 9.81, which is 343.35. However, because I'm pulling it, we're going to end up with uh, this guy over here uh, actually kind of lifting it up and off a little bit. So what the uh, net effect uh, of all that will be is this guy down here. It's going to be uh, what it normally weighs, 343.35, minus the amount that I'm actually lifting off, uh, 78.18. Give me a grand total of 265.17. That's what the bathroom scale would read, because I'm helping to lift it off. I'm also pulling it sideways at 167.67, which you can see is just the cosine of the angle, 25 degrees, uh, times 185. Now, I'm told in this problem that I'm pulling on it, and it is moving at constant velocity, which, of course, means that the acceleration has to be? Zero. Can't hear you. Zero. Everybody? Zero. That's better. Thank you. Therefore, the net force has to be? Zero. Thank you very much. Now, I'm pulling forward at 167.67. And yet the net force is zero. So tell me, how much friction do I have to have? No, no, if I had no net, then I would still be going forward. Acceleration. If I'm pulling forward at 167.67, but the net effect is zero, therefore the friction has to be, you got it, 167.67. So I now know what the force of friction is. If I'm not accelerating. However, I am accelerating on this problem, and I want to know how much I'm accelerating. Well, the force of friction is the normal force times the coefficient of friction. The normal force we just calculated before was 265.17. Coefficient of friction, mu k, is given in the problem as 0.27. So uh, the force of friction is 71.60, trying to slow you down. So I have 167.67 saying go forward. I have my slowdown of 71.60. If I uh, subtract those two numbers, it gives me a number. It must equal to my net force. That's ma. So I'll have 35 times A is equal to the net force. Solve for A. I'm getting 2.74. Uh, 2 uh, meters per second squared. Your book gives it to you simply as uh, 2.7 because they pay attention to sig figs. Now, question four is very much like question one with an exception. On question four, you have your box, but you're not given mu k. However, you're told that you're pushing down 
at uh, 425 at an angle of, what was it, 35.2? 35.2 degrees, pushing down. And we're told that the box has a weight of 325. Please note, that's newtons. That's not kilograms. If it were kilograms, the weight would be 325 times 9.81. They're telling you that the mass times 9.81 is equal to 325, so they just saved you a little bit of grief. So what you have going down is 325. What you have going down is 425 sine of 35.2 degrees. What you have going forward, because you're pushing on it, is 425 cosine of 35.2 degrees. And what you have trying to pull you backwards is the force of friction. OK, so my force of friction is the normal force times the coefficient of friction. Now, I am told that the box does not accelerate in this question number four. Therefore, I know the force of friction has to equal to the red arrow going to the right, which is 425 cosine of 32, excuse me, 35.2. Let me pause while we punch that number out. OK, so I'll have that the uh, go forward force is 347.29. The force of friction has to equal to the normal force times uh, mu k is equal to 347.29. 347.29. Now, if I could just figure out what the normal force is, I could solve for mu k. Let's see if we can figure out what the normal force is. The ground has to support two things. One, the 325 of the box, plus me pushing down at 244.98. Give me a ground total of 244.98 plus 325 of 569.98. So I'll have a normal force 569.98 times my coefficient of friction, mu k is equal to 347.29. So mu k will equal to, let's see if we can do some numbers here, 347.29 divided by 569.98 equals 0.61. Which is what the book says. I like question is, Mr. Duncan, where did the 569 come from? 569 was the 325 plus the 244.98. Weight of the box plus you pushing down on it. OK, Holly? OK, question is, how do I know the force of friction is equal to 347.29? Is it, is it is the block speeding up, slowing down, or no acceleration? No acceleration, OK? And yet, I am pushing it forward at uh, 347.29. That's uh, this guy right here, 425 cosine of 35.2. So if I'm pushing it forward, shouldn't it speed up if I'm pushing a force on it? It should speed up, unless there's something pushing it backwards. And what would that be? The force of friction, that's right. And so if I'm not accelerating, that tells me the force of friction exactly counts, uh, cancels my forward force. If you set your car on cruise control, you're not speeding up and slowing down. If I measured how much force the engine's actually providing moving me forward, I could easily calculate what the force of the frictions on the car are. It would be exactly whatever the, the engines are, just in the opposite direction. Okay, other questions? Amber?
Okay, number three. I have a 75 kilogram block on a ramp with an unknown coefficient of friction. The block is moving downhill and it's actually accelerating. What that tells me is that the effect of gravity is stronger than the force of friction. If the force of friction were stronger, then it would actually be accelerating upward, in other words, slowing down. I would like to find out what the coefficient of friction equals. Mu k is equal to question mark. So going downward, I have what I like to call the effect of gravity, the sixth equation I've asked you to memorize. Actually, it's mg sine theta. mg sine of theta going down, that's the effect of gravity. And going the opposite direction is the force of friction. That's what I have. I'm not pushing on it, I'm not pulling on it, I'm just kind of letting it do its own thing. If I add those two forces, the green one and the blue one together, it will give me a net force. And that has to equal to ma. But let's figure out first what our force of friction is. Our force of friction, as you know, is the normal force times the coefficient of friction. And my normal force, due to the weight of the block alone, is the fifth equation I ask you to memorize. That would be mg cosine of the angle of the ramp. And then I'll multiply by mu k. So let's pause for a moment, and then we'll put it all together. I'm a dork, man. Okay, here we go for the third time. I have to actually turn the microphone on and hit the record button. F net is mg sine theta. That's the effect of gravity going down. But I have uh, friction, which would be mg cosine theta mu k. And that has got to equal to ma. F equals ma, one of Newton's laws. You'll notice, please, that I can factor out an m. What that says is it does not matter whether that box is 175 or only 75. Now think about the implications of that. You have your F-150 truck, and you're going downhill, and you slam on the brakes. Or for that matter, it could be flat. It doesn't matter. It could be level hill, or you could be uphill, or downhill. You apply your brakes, and as long as you don't have a blowout, or your tires aren't completely smoking and melting, uh, it, you'll stop in the same distance. Let me say that again. You're hauling 2,000 pounds of bricks, or your truck is completely empty. You stop in the same distance. Now, it's counterintuitive. You're thinking, but, but I'm all loaded. I, I've got a lot of oomphability going forward. Sh I, I, I should go a lot longer. It takes me longer to stop. And yet, wait a minute. If I weigh a lot more, then my tires are pushing down harder on the ground, which gives me more friction. So I have more oomph go forward, but I also have more uh, go backwards called friction. It turns out it cancels. As long as you're within the limits of not having so much friction on your tires that it changes the coefficient of friction. For example, having a blowout. Yeah, that'll mess things up. Or if your tires get so hot that the rubber vaporizes, we call that smoke. If you have smoke going between your tires and the road, now you've got a cushion of vapor or air, and it's kind of like the little hockey pucks air hockey thing. And yes, that would take you longer. But as long as you don't have so much friction that you're melting your tires, it should not make a difference. In fact, if your tires get warmer, you should actually get better friction, not worse. Think about the drag racers. They want to have really good friction on their tires so they can get down the road as quickly as possible. It wants to grab the road. Okay? Talking a little you know, thing where it has the little light things up and you know, like the 10 light bulbs. Beep, beep, beep. And, okay, and when it hits about halfway down, what are they doing to their tires? Yeah, they're revving them up. They have the brakes on and you're smoking those things. They're getting the tires hot because when they're hot, they're softer. 
They're softer, they're more squishy, they can get into the little irregularities of the blacktop a little bit better, giving you better friction. They become a little bit more sticky, grabs onto the road better. So if anything, tires getting hotter, I would reason, stop faster than bone cold tires. Questions up to here? Okay, hearing none. We can cancel our M's by factoring an M out of each location, and now we can plug in our numbers. I have G is 9.81, sine of 25 degrees, minus 9.81, cosine of, uh, what was it, 10 degrees? No, 25 degrees times whatever mu k is. Did they give us mu k? They did not. But did they give us the acceleration? Wonderful. Acceleration is 3.60. Let's solve for mu k. OK, if I plug in my values, solve for mu k, I got uh, 0 0.62. Your uh, book had uh, 0 0.61. Actually, I have 0 0.06187, blah, blah. Uh, that's just round off air sig figs. How many numbers you keep in your calculator? I, uh, I always round off at the very end, sig fig it. Uh, it the book sig figs it every step through. Uh, question was, would it make a difference if I, if I didn't cancel out the mass? No, it wouldn't. Because I would multiply the green guy by, what was it, 35? 35, or no, 75. The blue guy by 35, or 75, and the black guy by 75, so it wouldn't matter.